What's up YouTube? It's Kenny again. I'm sitting here in a straight up traffic jam. Let me show you. Straight up traffic jam. Looks like there was a fatality accident in front of me. I wanted to just make a video. Uh, now this is going to be a long one guys, alright? So stick through to the end. Just want to say before I get started, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a truck driver driving across the country trading and researching stocks. And uh, I'm not your mama. I will not be held responsible for any moves you make in the stock market. So that is what it is, all right? Uh, also, hit that subscribe button, guys. I'm going to throw out all the stocks in my portfolio right now. And so hit that subscribe button. Help me build the channel. Like the video. And leave me a comment. Let me know, you know, if you're invested in any of these stocks, if you like these stocks, what you think, uh, what you're doing. So with that said, uh, I've found myself in a position that is unusual for me, okay? Uh, I normally, in my Roth IRA, I like to do a lot of swing trades, the short-term to mid-term plays, all right? But I've done a lot of reorganizing, okay? I, I sold off a bunch of stuff to free up money and, you know, look for a big pullback or look for some kind of an opportunity based on what's going on in the government right now and stuff. And I've done that, okay? I bought some things. I sold a couple of those things because I changed my mind on them. You know, I, I've reorganized a lot, okay? I'm, I'm to the point to where I freed up a whole bunch of money and right now, I've only got about 650 in cash because I've deployed it all, all right? Uh, I moved my highly on position, or I moved some of it anyway, over to my long-term portfolio, uh, so don't be surprised that it's not in this video, okay? I've, I've started building a position in my other portfolio in highly on and in CLNE, both of which I feel are connected. Uh, but I wanna talk about the position that I find myself in now in my Roth IRA. I really feel like all of the positions that I have right now, which is about, I don't know, it's about $8,500 worth of positions, are going to double or triple, and in some, play, some uh, cases possibly 5 or 10x over this year. Like, I'm really feeling good about where my portfolio is right now. And so I don't know if I'm going to do as much swing trading and stuff over this. I mean, I will still do it over the next year because there will still be more deposits. In a couple of week, I'm, weeks, I'm going to make another deposit and I'm going to continue to make deposits. But the positions that I hold right now, I'm not sure if I want to sell them, to be honest with you, because my, my goal that I've set for myself is to take my account to 25000 So I need to more than double the money that is currently in here, the you know, and then I need to also make my six thousand dollar deposit in my Roth IRA, which I have not started on this year's deposits yet, in order to get to that twenty five thousand. And like looking at my portfolio right now and the way I've structured it, I really think I've got a chance to do even better than that. All right, so I want to take the time. To let you guys know all of the positions that I currently have and just briefly talk about each one. It's gonna I'm gonna try to be brief, but this probably will be a 30-minute video, alright? So just stick around and like I said, subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what you think about these stocks or if you're invested in them or how you feel about them. So uh, first of all, I want to talk about the speculative one. The, the one that I feel is the most speculative, all right? I'm getting a little movement here. Uh, and that is OEG, Orbital Energy Group, all right? So this one is a penny stock. It's a $4 stock. And I know I just railed against penny stocks, but this one I think is a good long-term prospect, at least on a speculative basis. Like, it is speculative, all right? It, it could fail, but... I think it's not going to. I think that it could potentially even 10x over the year. All right. So let's talk just a little bit about it, okay? 
Orbital Energy Group was formerly a company called CUI. So when you look at the chart, you'll see that it was really cheap penny stock not too long ago, but they have completely restructured the company. New business model, new name, new CEO with a lot of experience in the field, okay? And these guys are uh, in the clean energy uh, space. Uh, so one of the things they do that they were already doing is like probing and testing on natural gas wells and stuff like that, okay? They're not actually digging the natural, I mean, drilling the natural gas or fracking or anything. They're, they're like probing and testing and stuff like that, okay? But they've also, now they're doing solar. I, I believe, uh, at least it looks like that they're in the project management arena of solar, okay? And they currently are about to finish up a big solar farm. They're working on another solar farm and they've got another one they've just started, okay? And the solar industry not only is it set to explode over the next decade, but with the Democrats controlling everything, like solar is something that I'm really interested in. And this is a company, I believe, that gives me the opportunity, if they execute well, to 10x my money. All right, I've only got 100 shares. Uh, my cost basis is about 408. So even if, even if I don't do well, it's not a big chunk of money. But I do feel like there's the possibility that I could 5 or 10x that money over the course of the year. So we'll keep watching it. Uh, they've also recently announced that they have a new uh, division that does drilling for foundations and stuff, but they uh, apparently the CEO was really involved in this before, and they're, they're able to dig and set foundations in places that are super hard, like marshes and uh, rock and stuff so they're in an area there that is uh, very difficult and uh, the CEO like I said has a lot of experience in that so I mean you know they could put solar farms they could set the foundation and stuff to put solar farms in unusable areas like marshes and stuff like that uh, I don't know man. I just see a lot of potential in this one and even though it's a penny stock and I don't usually play with penny stocks uh, there's actually another penny stock on here, but it's it's totally different. Uh, I just see the potential. I see potential in that company. It's not a super big hype company or anything, but I think if they execute well, they could easily hit $30 or $40 a share this year. Uh, so who else? Let's talk about the other penny stock, all right? This one... I, I, probably technically not a penny stock anymore but it is an OTC stock because it's an MJ company and they can't really get listed on the on the NASDAQ and stuff uh, so this is Planet 13 all right Planet 13 has an MJ dispensary it's the biggest dispensary in the world and it is in Las Vegas Nevada okay a lot of you may have heard of, of Planet 13 uh, and I, I was buying into this stock when it was like two dollars a share. It's up over six now. Uh, I've made money on this stock a couple of times, and you know, I just if I would have left my four hundred shares in there, I would have made so much money by now. But I didn't, and so I just bought today another hundred shares. At I, it was a big pullback. Today's a big old red day, so I was looking for buys today. But I got it at 568 a share. Like I said, it's been up over six recently. Uh, and I really think that this stock could, is, is almost surely going to double this year and could do even better depending on potential legislation that could pass and stuff like that. So they have this big dispensary, right? And here's the, here's the kind of brief story. They had a dispensary in, in Nevada. I believe it was in Las Vegas. And they... Uh, they shut that down and used the license to create Planet 13. This company has a phenomenal balance sheet, a great management team. They have a lot of cash on the balance uh, sheet, and they've been just raking in profits, all right? They're more than just a dispensary. They create all of these products, and they distribute them throughout Nevada, okay? 
So recently they acquired a license from another company and they reopened their original dispensary. So these products they and these products that they create are really popular in the dispensaries throughout Nevada. They sell out, they're, they've got good branding and stuff. So in Q1 of 2021, they've already broken ground, they've already been working on it. They're opening a store in Santa Ana, California, another superstore. This and the superstore in Las Vegas, I didn't really mention, they got like laser walls and coffee shop and they're constantly packed with lines and it's it's like it's it's amazing, okay? Even during the pandemic, they've just been raking it in, uh, doing delivery and all kinds of stuff. So the products though, okay, because of the laws, they can't transport their products across state lines. So when they open this new superstore in Santa Ana that's coming, like it's supposed to open in the next few months, uh, then once they get the products pumping out of there, they'll be able to distribute products across California. Then they've got more expansion plans to go into places like Illinois and other recreationally, le recreationally legal states. And uh, I just can see that if some kind of legislation happens that legalizes or decriminalizes and something happens that allows them to be able to ship these products across state lines, uh, they're going to dominate, guys. They're going to dominate that space. And uh, I can totally see them. Hold on, let me change my log here. I can totally see these guys if if they continue to execute the way they have been and they're able to do all of this expansion that they're planning and the Santa Ana store opens and news starts coming out and start raking in profits, this stock's easily going to be $12 by the end of the year. And, and really, like, if the legislation comes through and they're able to start transporting across state lines and uh, more rapidly expand, like, they could do a lot better than that. But I, I really do feel like this stock could easily double this year, if not more. Uh, so, the next stock. So, those are the two that I feel are really speculative, all right? Nano Dimension, NNDM, is a company that I've invested in several times and done swings on. And every time I do it, I wait for an offering and then the, the, it does the same thing every time for the last four or five offerings. They do an offering, share price drops. I buy in, then when the offering closes, the stock goes back up, and then it gets another dollar or so, okay? And I just recently did it, made another $120 on it, and I just, I was having a talk with some people in a Facebook group uh, that's just for me and my friends that I run, and, uh, you know, we talked about how when you swing trade, a lot of times you'll, you'll sell, and then the stock will keep going up. And then maybe it comes back down and you buy back in, but it's never usually as low. And you end up with this little area that you missed out on profits. And there's been a lot of times that I've swing traded something. Like look at Clean Spark as, as an example. I swing traded it when it was like $7 a share. And now it's like 30 or something. You know, and that's happened to me several times. And this with NNDM, I've made money on it several times, but the stock just keeps going up. And they're really innovating in that 3D printing and the circuit board space, you know. And not only are they innovating, but they've got their proprietary inks that are conductive and stuff. That, like, currently their products are mostly useful for prototyping, but the next model is supposed to be uh, useful for actual production. And when you get to the point to where their machines are being used in a manufacturing setting to manufacture these circuit boards, the companies are going to have to come back to them for the ink because it's their proprietary ink. And so you have this recurring revenue stream. And then they've just opened some, some type of a base of operations in the United States. It's an Israeli company. And uh, I don't know, man. I just I really see that if they ever stop doing the offerings every time the share price jumps up, this smuggler could jump to 20 easily. And, you know, I'm, I'm in 100 shares at $10.20. I really feel like this one's going to double for me if I hold it. So I'm going to hold it this time, at least for a while. I'm going to at least hold these stocks for a few months and see how they do. You know, I'm, uh, the possibility I could, if something's not really performing, I might sell it. But as of right now, I, I don't plan to. All right, so those three are the three most speculative ones. The rest of them, I'm super confident about, guys. One of them is 
in phase energy okay they're in the solar space they make micro inverters super solid company they basically 3x this year if not more and i i could easily see them doubling again uh, the solar space is hot the Democrats in control, pushing legislation for clean energy, and solar is going to be hot, okay? And solar is going to continue to expand over the next 10 years, you know, if not longer. And Enphase is, is in a really good spot to take advantage of that. And I've already made a lot of profit on just the 15 shares that I have. I had 10 shares. I recently bought another 5 shares, but I was up like 35% before I bought the 5 shares. And there was a big pullback today, and unfortunately, uh, it's in such a big position in my portfolio that I didn't really want to buy anymore. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm way up on it. I expect that it could easily double this year, and so that was always going to be a long-term hold. Another stock that I bought is PACB. I bought that earlier this week. Uh, Pacific Biosciences of California. They're in the genomic sequencing sector okay in the genomic sector and they have a machine that does the long form of sequencing which usually is not very accurate but it gives the accuracy of the short form which usually leaves a lot of information out so they're really revolutionizing that space and uh, I know we've got BNGO and you know they could do well potentially I know a lot of people made a lot of money but I feel like PACB is the safer bet and you know they've just been running up and running up i want to say they 10 x this last year and you know it's only like 38 dollars a share or something today and i really really could see this company like tripling this year i mean i could easily see it run into a hundred dollars a share i mean it's just it's just my feeling on it guys I, I think that there's almost no way that i don't at least double my money if something like unless something really bad happens okay so that's pacb uh let's see sun power sun power spwr bought 50 shares of them there was a pullback uh Sun Power, like they have a, a an innovative solar panel, and they also do battery storage, and they have a solution that is basically integrates the two together and does power management, so it uh, saves money on the electricity that somebody does pull from the grid. They're also they're involved in residential, commercial, and industrial, so they're just like a pure play on solar and. I see solar like doing so well and I think this company has like 3x over last year and with the way solar is going to do I see it doubling this year uh, easily and uh, yeah I mean sun power guys uh, so I've got in my portfolio right now I've got three stocks that are focused on solar because I just feel really good about solar over this year uh, what else let's see NNDM, Enphase, OEG, PACB, Planet 13, uh, Ride, R-I-D-E. This is Lordstown Motors. Now this one, if it doesn't perform, you know, there's a possibility I might sell this one off. I'm down in a little bit right now. I bought a little too high, but it is a big red day today. Uh, and I bought it a couple days ago. But Lordstown Motors... Okay, they're going to make an electric pickup truck, all right? Looking across the EV space, they're the only ones making a pickup truck. Yes, Tesla has the uh, cyber truck, but it doesn't look like a pickup truck, and Bubba and Cletus ain't going to want to drive that as a work truck, all right? But this endurance truck that they're making is a badass pickup truck okay and it's got like i'm not going to go too in depth but it's got motors on all four wheels so it's four wheel drive adaptive it's it's a badass pickup truck all right and these guys are no joke like like they're not one of these companies that is just a startup okay i mean they are they haven't they they're not supposed to start delivering vehicles until september but they have a big ass plan they bought a general motors plan 
okay? And the General Motors plant used to make Hummers, and it also used to make the Chevy electric vehicle, whatever it was, the Chevy Cruze or whatever it was that wasn't popular. They bought this whole big ass plant. It's like one of the biggest three plants in the U.S. for these EVs, okay? And it's being retooled right now. And these guys have 100,000 pre-orders, which is enough if they all pan out to keep them pumping out trucks through the end of 2023, okay? I think Lordstown Motors is going to be a big success when they when their vehicles start hitting the road. Right? I can see all kinds of, uh, you know, like I used to work in the concrete industry and you know, all the salesmen and all those guys drive pickup trucks and they all drive pickup trucks on the work crews. The boss man always comes up in the pickup truck. And I can just totally see that really catching on, the pickup truck thing, because it looks like a regular, you know, it looks like a really nice pickup truck. It doesn't look all futuristic and shit and I can see it really catching on and I think that when those vehicles start hitting the road Lordstown Motors is going to pop and they recently were approached about government funding of some kind I think some kind of a loan or something and uh, they're in talks to to get this loan and this could accelerate their production I mean it could accelerate their timeline and make them start delivering vehicles sooner and uh, that news could potentially push the stock higher when if news comes out that they got that funding. Uh, so Lordstown Motors, like it's, I could easily see it if they start pumping out vehicles and stuff, like doubling or coming close to it. And if it gets real hyped, it could go higher, you know. So uh, Lordstown Motors, R-I-D-E. And then the other one I'm kind of stuck in, but I do like it. Uh, and so if you're going to buy this stock, buyer beware, because there's a $50 charge, at least there was for me, to buy this stock. And I didn't realize it before I bought it, and I screwed up, and I only bought 50 shares. So basically, even though I've already, that goes into your cost basis. So even though I'm already up past that 50 and in the green, if I sell it, I'll be in the red because it cost me $50 to sell it. I only bought 50 shares of it. It's a very good food company. Ticker symbol is B-R-Y-Y-F. You may have heard it talked about by a couple of people on YouTube. And what they do is they make plant-based meat for vegetarians. It's basically like sausages and stuff like that, but they're made from beans. And this company recently got a big old production facility that's going to allow them to really expand their, uh, their production and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of got stuck in it, but it kind of gives me an incentive not to sell. And I do think that this company, this product could easily double in price over the year. Uh, and I'll probably end up just sitting on it because I really didn't spend that much on it. I've only got about $300 in it, and that's after the cost basis thing for 50 shares. So uh, it's not going to hurt me either way to hold it. We'll see what happens. Uh, I believe that's everything. Yeah, I believe that's so. That's everything that's in my portfolio right now, guys. I got 100 shares of NNDM, 15 shares of Enphase, 100 shares of OEG, Orbital Energy Group, 20 shares of Pacific Biosciences (PACB), 100 shares of Planet 13 (PLNHF). That's an OTC stock. Uh, 40 shares of Lordstown Motors. That's RIDE. I got 50 shares of Sun Power, that's SPWR, and 50 shares of Very Good Food Company, which is BRYYF. Be careful of that $50 charge. And all of these stocks, when I look at them and think about them, like, I think I can easily double my money just holding these stocks. And that's what I need. I need a little more than a double up to meet my goals. And then the $650 that I have in cash right now, I'm going to, right now, I'm going to do some swing trades with it. And uh, then as the deposits come in, uh, it's going to be a couple of weeks before I can make one, but I've got to do $6,000 worth of deposits over the year. And those, at least right now, my plan is as I deposit more, I'll do my swing trades with that money and let these sit unless something changes and I decide to sell one of them or something. But for the most part, I feel really, really comfortable with my portfolio right now. I wanted to just throw that out there and let you guys see what I'm doing 
and how I'm feeling about things. And, uh, you know, I was able to get some deals on this big red day today. And I feel really good about my cost basis on these stocks. And I really feel like they're going to do really well for me if I just hold them. I mean, I, I just see so much potential in all of them that I feel like if I swing them, I'm going to lose money. I mean, even though I gain, I feel like there's more money in them if I just hold them. So, again, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about those stocks. You know, I might make individual videos on each one of them and break them down a little more uh, thoroughly. Uh, it'll provide some content, maybe give you guys an idea of... Uh, about more information about the stocks but I just wanted to give you a rundown of that portfolio I might do the same thing for my long-term portfolio those are much smaller positions over there but they were always intended just to sit there and uh, you know that's with the taxable account so I put less over there once I max out my Roth I'll be focusing more on that but I'm starting to build it up more right now. It's up a little over $1,000 right now. And I'm trying to keep pumping a little bit in it here and there. And uh, I'll do a video on that at some point. But that's my Roth. I, this is my Roth IRA, my tax-free account. And it's what my plan is as of right now. Things always can change. I always evolve my views and, you know, reevaluate. But as of right now, I'm just so comfortable with everything that I've got in there that I think the better option is to hold it. So let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, and thanks for watching.